how's it going? Great. Good, 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 good. Yeah, I sort of had to make a decision if I was going to do a presentation just for the camera or for the students, but you're my priority now. You're here, and I'm going to present in and around and with all of you. My name is Kevin Adair, and I have the opportunity to go and do presentations at schools quite often, actually. And this is a, a great time. It's a great conference, and it's good to be a part of it. This is a leadership workshop. It's showing how you can be leaders, and it shares a little bit of my story along the way, too. So. Right now, just take a moment, look around the room here, because everybody at this school and everyone at this conference is already on a leadership track. You're already here because you did something inventive or creative or something that can identify you as someone who's not just going to be sitting around at a job that doesn't pay you very much. You're going to get out there and you're going to do something and you're going to be leading other people. So. What you're looking at right now is a group of about 30 people, 30 people who are already self-selected as leaders. So what are you going to lead? What are you going to do? Who is going to be following you? And what are you going to do with that power? So right now, someone in this room here today might be a head of state, might have their own corporation, might be an entrepreneur. In fact, lots of people are thinking about being entrepreneurs, starting their own business. Raise your hand if you've got an idea that could start a business. Yeah? Raise your hand if you've got any interest at all in doing things like public service, like being a police officer or a teacher or a politician. Those are leadership roles. All right, now, this is something you don't have to let raise your hand about. But if you take your average 30 leaders in the world, doesn't matter what country you're in, somebody here in this room today, just by statistics, is probably going to do something criminal in their life. So look around right now. <laughs> so it's true. It's true. If you just take any 30 people who are going to be leaders, some of them will abuse their power. Some of them will do something involving corruption, doing, do something involving a leadership role that's not positive. Because that's the power that you have. You have the power to be a leader in a positive way, and hopefully most of you, if not all of you, will do that. But you have to remember that with that power comes responsibility. All right, well, that's just a little idea of what we're going to be talking about today. But I should introduce myself a little bit more. My name is Kevin Adair, as I said. And I actually made it to the Dominican Republic by some of the skills that I developed. And I've developed a, a few interesting skills. Now, one of the other things that we'll talk about in this next 35 minutes is that you can find innovative ways to use your skills for anything you want to do. And one of the things that's helped me get around the world and perform and interact with people is some performance skills. And you can use anything for performance skills. I just went shopping today. And uh, yeah, I happen to have some, uh, some oranges, some chinos. And uh, yeah, I think I'll, uh, I'll get these things juggling. But to do it, I need everybody's help. I need some encouragement. Everybody say, one, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. All right, we're going to go. And I'm going to throw some music in along the way. How about this song? All right, try it again. Everybody say one, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. You will witness the self same show that has allowed me to travel through the pouring rain over high mountains through this town through that village, past crossroads, through many tunnels, whoosh, whoosh, <laughs> past tall buildings, over rolling hills, ah! <laughs> through falling snow. Okay, check it out. This, this is me. Here's the snow. I'm going to go right through the snow. Not much room in the snow. Whoosh.
for your entertainment, innovative, creativity, pleasure. In fact, after you've seen today's performance, today's presentation, you might just leave saying, out of all the presenters I've seen who can juggle and do creative international development, out of all of them, Kevin Adair was definitely one of them. opportunity to come here to the Dominican Republic. I was actually brought here to work at the resorts in Punta Cana. I was living on the resorts and traveling. They were driving me from resort to resort to resort. I actually went down to buy eBay and uh, I was working for four different resorts all through the same company. And I had all day free just to sit around on the beach or by the pool. But you know what? I really got tired of just sitting around. So I decided to come into the country Actually, when I left the resort to get a, a local taxi cab instead of a, a tourism taxi cab to get on a guagua and go into Iguay, they were all warning me. The taxi guys were like, don't go, don't go, it's dangerous out there. Well, I know that the Dominican Republic is a, is a country with an amazing history, an amazing culture, an amazing connection. And I wanted to get into here and, and experience the people. But you know, most of the tourists that visit Punta Cana and, and, and Puerto Plata, they, they just fly in. They only see the beach. They only do beach stuff. A lot of people who come to Punta Cana don't even know they're in the Dominican Republic. It's crazy. So, I mean, it's a, you can do that in any tropical location anywhere in the world. But here, you've got a culture. You've got a history. You've got programs like this program. Like the school, wow, it goes, you can start pre-K and go all the way through high school. It's amazing. This is something that, uh, that people around the world don't have as much access to, and here you have it. It's, 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 you, it's here, it's you. So when I was here, I decided to do something to create an impact. And I have these creativity skills. I might even be getting a, a few people up later to, uh, to exchange creativity skills. But uh, let me show you with video, because it's, it's easier to show you with video, a little synopsis of the different things that I've done since I've come to the island. And it's things that you can somehow figure out a way to work through as well. There's me. For over 20 years, Kevin Adair has presented around the world for schools, colleges, corporations, trade shows, and television. And those presentations are exactly what I'm doing here today. So you don't need to see all of the variety performance that I use on this video. But let's start here and explore Dominican and Haitian people on the island that's just a two-hour flight from Miami. Here we it's are. great to impact an audience. But Kevin ventured off the resort in order to impact the world. Haiti is number eight on the failed states index. It's the only country in the Americas of the 50 least developed countries in the world. So Kevin went to the border to work with local people and make an impact. Haiti is over 98% forested, and yet, Charcoal cooking in Haiti kills over 5 million tons of trees per year. Here's Haiti. That's Haiti on the left. Here's the Dominican yeah. Republic on the right. Where is all that charcoal coming from? Right now, trees are being destroyed in the Dominican Republic near the Haitian border. Virgin forests on protected lands are disappearing. Trees are being smoked into charcoal, which is then smuggled into Haiti where practically all of the original lush forests have been destroyed. Trees of all varieties are being cut down when they are barely saplings to make charcoal. Many Haitians risk their lives to deliver bags of charcoal, such as these, to locations deep within Haiti. Boats full of charcoal and other supplies travel every day. Drownings are frequent, and without help from concerned international citizens, the fragile forests of the Western Dominican Republic will soon be lost, just like the forests of Haiti. Charcoal smoke kills Haitian cooks and the children they care for. Kevin Adair worked with Haitians and Dominicans to found El Fuego del Sol to improve the social and ecological environments of the DR and Haiti. At El Fuego del Sol, we welcome visitors from around the world to meet local Haitian and Dominican families for everyone's benefit. Where we combine eco-industry eco-tourism visitors, and an eco-village, all right here in one location. We're building sun ovens, ovens that cook with only the sun, thus providing fair trade jobs to Dominican workers. 
group from the University of San Francisco traveled with us across the DR and into Haiti, delivering sun ovens along the way. It's a very lightweight. We built these here in a fair trade factory paying living wages. <laughs> Sun ovens ecologically cook delicious food. And everything was cooked with the sun. The World Food Program invited Kevin and El Fuego del Sol to expand into producing eco fuel briquettes from waste paper to provide fuel for the WFP school feeding program in Haiti. Kevin designed the best fuel briquettes for the WFP stoves. Then he and the El Fuego del Sol team designed the best ergonomic press to make 5,000 briquettes per day, creating 22 living wage jobs for Haitian workers. So this is our operation in Haiti. We do work both in the Dominican Republic and in Haiti. In consultation with the Legacy Foundation, Kevin developed this manually operated briquette press that consistently produces 25 briquettes in 62 seconds. Haiti has abundant wind, wave, and solar energy potential ready for development. The Fuego del Sol briquettes are dry in the sun. Working with combustion engineer Robert Fairchild, El Fuego del Sol designed, implemented, and is now manufacturing household briquette stoves which Haitian cooks prefer to cooking with charcoal. The Fuego del Sol briquette stove boils three liters of water in six minutes with only five briquettes. In one year, El Fuego del Sol has recycled more than 60 tons of paper, cardboard, and biomass in Haiti, providing over 500,000 servings of food to students and saving over 8,000 trees. The Clinton Foundation and the International Organization for Migration have provided support to scale up production capacity to 20,000 briquettes per day. The Canadian Embassy has contracted Fuego del Sol to ecologically collect and process their waste, which has reduced landfill trips by 90% and provided more paper and cardboard to make briquettes. Dozens of ecotourism visitors, medical service professionals, and developmental volunteers visit the DR in Haiti each year through Fuego del Sol's programs, connecting with the island's culture, history, and people. El Fuego del Sol works with Haitian and Dominican people to co-create systemic improvements that can generate long-term, verifiable development. So those are the programs that we're doing here in the Dominican Republic and in Haiti. We're also working uh, to bring, as I said in the video, international visitors from all over the world here and, uh, and learn and grow. And we like to encourage all of our participants on our trips. We just posted nine students from the, uh, from the university, uh, it's actually the college, Gettysburg College, and they were here for, from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. They were here for seven days learning and growing. We started here in Santa Domingo and we went all the way up to Jarabacoa and lived among a community up there. They're a rel relatively impoverished community, but they've got a lot to share and a lot to grow and a lot to learn from us and to share with us. And so the question is, since this is a skills-based workshop, how are you going to get out and do innovative things? So as I said, we've got a lot of different creativity things here and I think I should Get some people up here. Raise your hand if you'd like to come up and be some of our volunteers. Who wants to come up? It's his birthday. It's his birthday. It's his birthday. It's his birthday. Okay, how about you? How about two more volunteers? Okay, you and you. It's your birthday. You should have come up for now. Don't get to harass him on his birthday. We might harass him on his birthday. Okay, let's see. Uh, why don't we turn you around? like this, so you can face the audience to begin with. Um, and all three of you, you are all professional jugglers, right? Yeah, 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 yeah that's good. So uh, it's kind of good. One of the things to do in a creative environment is to be a little bit out of your element, but a place where you can grow. So I've got uh, plenty of things to juggle up here. Again, I, uh, I went shopping, so uh, let's see. Usually, one person can juggle three objects. But, uh, here you go, 
one for you, and one for you, and one for you. Oh yeah, you can eat them, I suppose. Okay, let's uh, turn a little bit like this. If you're fine, just back up one step. And if you come right over here, let me get your names. What's your name? Carla. Carla. Ellie. Ellie. Ian. Carla, Ellie, and Ian. They're doing great. Let's give them a big hand. Okay, when I say your name, now there's a whole audience back here, so don't don't hit them. Just throw it gently and don't hit that, whatever you do. So gently toss me. I'll actually turn over here, not in front of that. Okay, that'll work. Okay, uh, Carla. And catch that. Ellie. And Ian. All right. That's good. Now I'm going to be juggling. So every time you throw a ball to me, I'll throw one back to you. You catch it, we'll keep going. You look a little worried there, Ellie. <laughs> You'll be fine. Okay. So uh, yeah, every time you throw a ball to me, I'll throw one back to you. Let's try it. Here we go. Carla, catch that. Good job. Ellie. Ian. Throw a little higher so I have a little bit more time. But that's okay. Let's try it again. Carla. Ellie. in Germany and uh, quite a bit around the Caribbean and all over the United States. I've even done a presentation in Mexico. But uh, something that I've been promoting for quite a while is that you have to find the level of performance inside of you that can reach the same level of performance that professional actors and professional athletes do when they step up to, the, to their position in front of people. And now, Living your life at performance level, which is something that I've been promoting throughout our, my uh, performance career in presentations like this one, has, has kind of caught on. It's an idea, and you see it in commercials. So for example, let me show you a couple commercials that are currently running. And the thing that I find really intriguing is that whatever it is, whatever they're talking about, they like to think that the ultimate, the best thing you can do, the most exciting thing to live your life at performance level is, of course, to use their product. Well, I don't believe in that concept of these commercials, but it's really interesting to catch the cultural identity that's now flowing through our world. Here it is on very different concepts and ideas, living your life at performance level, which is what the people up here a moment ago were doing and what you can be doing in your leadership role in the future. Here's a couple examples. It's all been leading up to this. The moment you've been working toward your whole life. The moment your potential is unlocked. And the eyes of the world are on you. A leader in smart green networks. Welcome to the New York Stock Exchange, the biggest stage in business. Now, I really don't know what Silver Spring Networks does. They just got famous enough and big enough as a company that they're on the New York Stock Exchange. Okay, great. Great for them. But really, the idea is more important for me 
than what Silver Spring Networks does. For me, the idea is that all of those performances you saw, whether they were making a presentation like this one, there was a person making a, a, a speech, basically, to an audience such as you, and there were a ballet dancer and a swimmer, all these different performers, all these different athletic achievers, well, it's just a different way to explore the leadership potential that you have as well. Here's another one. sensation of clarity and awareness. It's owning your opponent. It's knowing beyond a doubt you've got this. It's keeping your head down, your eye on the ball, and knocking it out of the park. It's getting in the zone. It's keeping on your toes, on target, on top. Focus is staring the world in the face and saying, bring it. Focus is power. Focus is life. And five-hour energy is focus. So whatever their product is, Yay Ra for their product. Five hour energy, I don't advocate using a caffeine stimulant, that's not, you don't need that. The important thing is they're catching on to a, a cultural reality that's happening around the world to catch on to your own focus, to catch on to your own potential and your own leadership skills. All right, I've got another challenge up here. Should I bring the birthday guy up for the? Yeah. All right, come on up. Yeah. Come on up. All right, well, you know, birthdays are a time to celebrate, time to have your own individual moment. What's your name? Fernando. Okay. Fernando. Fernando. Okay, Fernando. Um, you know, and sometimes we, we, we sing happy birthday songs to, uh, to people, and I, I can share just a little creativity. Believe it or not, I came up with my own birthday song. So here's an alternative birthday song for Fernando. And I don't usually sing at these presentations, but what the hey, we're here. We're ready to uh, go out on a limb a little bit. So uh, here's what we do. Every time I go like this, everybody say Fernando. Fernando. <coughs> Try it again. Fernando. Fernando. We have a birthday wish to sing to you. Fernando. You're very highly respected here. It's true. Fernando. You know that we adore you. It's so true. We all care for you. That's why we all are here to sing. That's why we all are here to sing. That's why we all are here to sing to you. Fernando. Well, let's hear it for Fernando. some interesting things you can do with everyday uh, different articles. This is, of course, in that category. And uh, this is also, you know, we, we put the, our three jugglers into a little bit of a stressful situation. And I'm also, in addition to being a juggler, I'm also a bit of a magician. So, Fernando, I'd like to try a little magic trick with you, if that's okay. Yeah. Now, let me tell you, this is going to be a magic trick for Fernando. Everybody else is going to know how I do it because it's his birthday. Is it today your birthday? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's your birthday. And uh, so everybody else is going to know how I do it. So don't tell Fernando because that will kind of ruin the surprise. It's a special magical birthday gift for you. Okay. So you just have to tell me which hand it's in. It's pretty easy, right? One, two, three. <laughs> That's right. He got it. Let's give him a big hand. He's one for one. We can do it sort of like a athletic moment. You can keep score. So it's the same thing. Ready? One, two, three. <clears throat> He's getting there. He's getting there. Uh, no, not there. Good guess, though. Here, tell you what. I'll make it easier for you. I'll make it bigger. <laughs> Problems? Yeah. <laughs> 
his choice. He already, before I even got to the, the big kickoff at the end, he was already looking around and moving around, but by sitting him in a chair, he couldn't move very far. But that was very good, Fernando. You were actually trying to uh, outfox the, the magician to try and get a different angle on it, a more objective perspective. So that's, that was, those were really good skills. And if you saw a little bit of paper sticking out in one place or another, you used that because that was another tool that you had. But by sitting him down, he actually can only see in basically about this far with his peripheral, peripheral vision. And my hand was out of his line of sight when I did it. So literally, I was able to use the space over your head. <laughs> but something Fernando did that was really cool is even after I made it disappear, he figured out where it went. Now, a lot of volunteers that I have up here just have absolutely no clue and think it went somewhere else. But you figured it out, and, and you, you did very well, I think, in a very high <laughs> way. to explore and for me to explain some of the details of what we're doing. So what we really do is we're working in a concept of what's called a triple bottom line company. So most companies specifically focus on earning as much money as possible, and that's not a bad thing. But what we do is we work to be financially sustainable and make as big an impact as we can on the society and the ecology. And we do that through bringing in international technology, innovative solutions, and creating as many jobs as we can here in the Dominican Republic, and especially over in Haiti. Because Haiti has about 70% unemployment. So check it out. These issues that we're dealing with are here on this island of Hispaniola in both the DR and in Haiti. But they have international, in fact, global impact. The failed states index is something that I think is a little difficult. I don't, I don't really. Uh, support the name of the Failed States Index. It's something put out by foreignpolicy.com. Uh, the Dominican Republic is in the 70s out of the 175 countries in the world, which means that the Dominican Republic is as developed or more, than de more developed than about half the world, which is great, considering that island nations tend to have more of a challenge in their development history. So the Dominican Republic relatively is doing well. But Haiti is not. Out of all the countries in the world, 175 countries in the world, the eighth least developed country is Haiti. It's the only country in the lower 50 of countries in their development process in the Americas. So all of the Americas have more developed countries compared to Haiti, which is number eight. And then the next one is Honduras, which is like 52. So there's a huge, or, uh, yeah, 52. So there's a huge, huge separation there between what's going on in Haiti towards the challenge of their development to even the next lowest development in, in the States. Or in any case, do you know where Nicaragua stands in the, the ranks? What's that? The country of Nicaragua, do you know where, like, where it is? Ni like, Nicaragua? Yeah, it's 52. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, so, so, and, and none of the other countries in the states are, are even in the top 50 of the least developed countries in the world. So the question is how we can move Haiti into the relative development of countries like the Dominican Republic and even getting it up to the, the point of Honduras, 
would be a, a huge step in the right direction. Yeah, question? The, the Dominican Republic is number 74. So out of 170. So it's right in the middle of, of all the countries in the world. And, it's, and the, the Dominican Republic and Haiti are unique to have such a dramatic difference between two neighboring countries in a close environment. Well, there's only one other place that that actually happens, and that's Korea. South Korea and North Korea have a similar developmental disparity as the Dominican Republic and Haiti, uh, except uh, that, neither, that, uh, the, the, that North Korea is far more developed than Haiti is. Haiti is, is far less developed. So, uh, so how can we go about finding one problem and providing a solution? And that's what we've been doing, working with creative ideas. And this issue with deforestation is what we're focusing on, because until Haiti figures out a way to cook with something besides charcoal, they'll never be able to move forward to the point of the Dominican Republic or Honduras or any of the other more developed countries in our, in our hemisphere. So with, uh, we're dealing with this area right here on the border. And we have, we've been introducing our solar stoves that you saw it in the video. That's the sun oven. In the, in the communities of Onza Petra in Haiti and Pedernales in the Dominican Republic. And this is that image that you saw briefly in the video as well. This was originally published in the Guardian newspaper in the UK. That's Haiti. This is the DR. Now, what's happening is that smugglers are sneaking into the DR, stealing the trees, smoking them into charcoal, and turning those trees and taking that charcoal, smuggling it back over the border, and taking it and using it and burning it in Haiti. And it's a fascinating statistic that I can't emphasize enough. You take down a 100-pound tree, and you only get 10 pounds of charcoal. Because what they do is they dig a hole, and they bury the tree, and they put some dry wood in there. And they light the dry wood, and the dry wood catches the rest of the tree on fire, but it's buried, so it doesn't totally burn. It burns without oxygen, and that's how you get charcoal. And we caught that. I actually took this video on the border in the area of Pedernales. And there they are. They took down trees. They dug a hole. They're burning them into charcoal. And then they're going to take that into, into Anza Petra, and then from there into Port-au-Prince. Question? They use it for cooking. So they, uh, every family in Port-au-Prince cooks with charcoal, unless they, uh, they can afford pretty high, ex high expensive uh, propane stoves, or they're working with us in our program to introduce the briquettes. And remember, we make the briquettes out of recycled cardboard, paper, and sawdust. And those are all materials that would just be thrown away, or in the best situation, packed up and bailed and sent to China. So again, this is an example of something that we've started working on, because it's a specific problem that we're finding a specific solution for. And the idea is to be inspiring you to figure out what your problems can be, what you can address, and what you can use your life to see what you can improve as part of your global impact. So then, those, those bags of charcoal are collected in the Dominican Republic, taken over onto the Haiti side, and taken by boat around the southern peninsula of Haiti, in fact, what they do is they fill these boats up with charcoal, and then they throw plotinus on top, and then they throw people on top of that. And these boats often capsize, and a lot of people end up drowning from this process. The people who are on top actually paid something for the trip to Port-au-Prince. They go out to the tip of the southern peninsula, out there on the furthest west, west point of the island. They actually sleep on the beach, and then they finish the trip around to, uh, to Port-au-Prince. They go here all the way from here. They sleep here. It's about an eight-hour trip by boat, and then they finish it. The reason they do that is that there's some very high mountain ranges between here and on Petra and into Port-au-Prince, and it's very difficult to go over the mountains. So instead, it's easier to go around. There are trucks also that go over the mountains, though, too. And uh, there's also a lot of smuggling going on. If you ever go to Haiti through Himini, you'll see right on the side of the road there, they're collecting charcoal. They claim to be bringing the charcoal in from the north, but they're really sneaking it over the border here, where there's not very much border protection, and bringing it down. So uh, they cross this lagoon with charcoal, which is really from the Dominican Republic. 
So this is an issue, and this is what we're working on addressing. And we can also be, be happy to share more and more information with you. The, uh, the charcoal arrives in Port-au-Prince in bags, and these are the briquettes. I actually worked to design this briquette so it would burn very effectively, efficiently, and we're working with a combustion engineer to create these stoves. This is a, an institutional stove. We're using those, them in schools and orphanages and hospitals. And there's also the smaller stove that you saw in the video that can be used in individual houses. So that's how we're working together to try and get the, the use of charcoal reduced in Haiti. And these are some of our employees. We, we now have 18 workers working together with us. We invented, actually, this press. As you saw it working in the video, it creates 25 briquettes in only about a minute, which is the most effective. It's, a, it's an innovative concept, too, that we actually are using this press because it creates 10 jobs for each press. There are more automated presses that are available from both China and from Germany to make briquettes. But the problem with them is you only need one person to load it and one person to turn it on, and then someone to take this, the material out, the briquettes out when you're done. It creates two or at the most three jobs. This is much cheaper than those presses, which can cost up to $250,000. And they only create two or three jobs, where this creates 10 to 12 jobs. So we're creating jobs. We're able to produce these for, we could produce more than 10 of these for the same cost across that they produce one. And we are able to create jobs in a place where everybody really needs a job if they're going to start taking care of their own development. So we only have a couple minutes left. But in that time, I wanted to share with you just that concept. We don't believe in just giving things away as a developmental idea. What we do is we create those jobs. We take paper from the World Food Program and other UN programs in the United States Embassy, and we turn them into hundreds, even now thousands, of briquettes. And all of those workers create those jobs with it. So we don't think that development should be about giving things away. We think that development should be about giving people an opportunity, creating jobs, and finding innovative ways to solve solutions. I'll finish up with one quick thing, though. Here, someone catch, 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 catch. Oh, he Ooh. caught it. All right, you threw that. I threw that to you. You can throw it to me. And uh, I always like to end the show on a kind of exciting note, the presentation on an exciting note. So. Why don't we kick it off with everybody saying one, two, three, go, and you can throw that to me. One, one two, three, go. go. All right, now I'm juggling apples instead of oranges because why do you think I do that? Why, why did I make that change? You like juggling. What can I do with an apple that I can't as, as easily do with an orange? Eat it. Eat it. All right, here we go. Catch it in my mouth? I could probably do that, but I'm going to try and eat it. Okay, here we go. Everybody say one, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. Woo! I got it now. Hold on. Here it comes. <laughs> it's true, I like to take a challenge. Hopefully, not choke. Not choke. Alrighty. talking with my mouth full, but we're at the end of the show, and that's just about my only choice right now. I hope you enjoyed your presentation. hope you figure out ways that you can figure out to, uh, to create your own leadership skills, find your own ways to lead other people, and find your own ways to address new and different problems that the world is, is facing. And if you want to figure out a ways that you can work together with us, we like to network with other organizations, with people. We have interns. We have lots of different ways that uh, you can be a part of our programs and we can learn from you as well. Thanks.